Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, Blitz Chess postmortem video. This is a postmortem of my uh, Blitz Chess game number 36, and I played the uh, I played e4, and my opponent went into the Karo Khan defense, which you see is not the not the top move, but uh, it's one of the main defenses to e4 after the Sicilian, the e5, the classical e6, the French. So um, very solid defense, and. Uh, with some dynamic possibilities. I chose the uh, advanced variation e5, not quite as popular as uh, knight c3, or yeah, knight c3 is the top one. Another option is e takes d5, which is the exchange variation and uh, can lead to uh, after e takes d5 and takes back with the pawn, then you play, c you can play um, c4, and that's called the Panov Botvinnik attack, another, another way to play. But e5 has been uh, played a lot recently and seems to be doing well. So bishop f5, knight f3, e6, and bishop e2. And that is the main idea with this uh, system, just uh, normal, quiet developing moves, and you plan to go after this uh, bishop, uh, which is a little bit exposed here on f5, but at, at a later point in time. So my opponent chose knight e7 here, one of the top three moves, maybe knight d7 and c5 are equally valid ways to play c5 immediately, going after the pawns in the center. Um, and I play uh, my move here, knight bd2. Uh, you can see it's still in the opening book, but not the most popular. But uh, I've been playing this for a while, and it seems to do okay for me. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to keep playing it until somebody shows me why I can't play it. Um, and uh, being less popular, these these uh, statistics here aren't as meaningful. But um, seems like the main ideas here are uh, h6 to provide a square for the bishop. It can retreat to h7 then after h6, or c5 going after uh, the center again, or what my opponent played, which is knight d7, just continuing to develop. And I play my knight to b3, which is the main idea of this system. You get your knight here and then to b3. Try and clamp down on this square here, so it makes it a little harder for the c5 push to occur. My opponent follows up with b6, so showing that he wants to play c5 anyway. Let's see, other ideas here were knight c8, which seems very strange, but uh, and then also h6 or bishop to g6. So um, so h6 takes us out of books. So let's go back and look at the notation tab. And uh, I'm going to leave the computer turned off. I think I'll talk about, I looked at this with the computer and I'll talk about its findings as we go along. Um, so b6, knight h4 going after the bishop, c5. And I calculated correctly that I, I can afford to take the uh, bishop here. I guess if he takes uh, the pawn, I can even take back with that knight and just be a whole piece up. So he's got to take the knight back, and then I can play the most c3 to shore up the center. So he follows up with bishop e7, and we both castle. And now f4, the computer rates this move as a mistake. Um, one thing f4 does is it uh, weakens the square here in my interior, and the knight might drop in there and fork these two pieces. Um, and the only thing that prevents that is this bishop here. And you'll see my opponent spots a, a way to take advantage of this immediately. He plays c4. And um, I didn't even see what was coming. I went ahead and played knight d2. And then he follows up with knight uh, e3 and, and forks those two pieces. So uh, so this was bad. Um, but I did have one interesting option here, which is um, I could have played Actually, before I tell you, uh, maybe you want to treat this as a puzzle. So you see that um, <clears throat> black has this threat of knight to e3. And you don't want to retreat this knight to uh, d2 because that'll just allow that knight to come in here. But your knight is under attack. So what else could you play? So think about that for a little bit. Pause the video if you want more time. I'm going to go ahead and give away the answer here. Um, the computer suggests g4 can be played here. This is a new variation. Um, so let's take a look at that. Uh, one idea is if he takes my knight, I can take his knight. And um, if he keeps on taking pawns, I can take here. And he has to take back with a pawn. And then I can play this move, uh, bishop to g4, attacking this pawn. And uh, he has no good way to defend it. It's really funny. Uh, the brook can't defend it. The bishop can't defend it. The queen has no moves that can defend it. And the knight can't go to uh, any of the squares that might defend that pawn. Uh, I guess the king could defend it. But it's a little awkward to have your king uh, 
on the F file, and I could probably push ahead with F5 in that case. So uh, uh, not not a good way to play there. And um, so after after G4, instead of taking my knight, he really the computer recommends that he moves his knight away, and um, and then I can bring my knight back to D2 without fear of this. Uh, knight to e3 attack and I can even go here to f3 and threaten to trade that off perhaps. So uh, that would have been a way to maintain equality. Um, so, But the combination of these two moves, first f4 and then after c4 knight d2 uh, gives black a definite advantage and so he's uh, just clearly better after this. And um, he didn't miss one trick right here. After I moved my queen to a4, that was a bit of a mistake. Uh, I really should have gone to e1. It's another new variation. And then the knight could go here and fork these two pieces. And so queen back to here, knight there. And um, after knight f3, I'm going to eventually get this knight back and I'll be down the exchange. So it's similar to what happened in the game. Um, when I played queen a4, um, that allows black an interesting opportunity here. He went ahead and took my knight, my rook right away, but he had a stronger move here. So another another tactical quiz for you. It's uh, your turn. You're black, and what's what's the best move for black here? Okay, I'm going to give the answer away. Uh, pause the video if you want more time to think about it. The answer is the interesting uh, a6. And what this move is doing is it's actually threatening to trap the queen. If he gets in the move b5, um, the queen has no squares. The knight is guarding these two squares. And his pawns can attack uh, all of these squares. And then the queen's covering this square and the bishop is covering these dark squares. So my queen is in danger of being trapped here. And uh, the computer gives some crazy line like knight takes uh, c5 to try and escape. So uh, not good. Yeah, after a6, I'd be in big trouble. So, um, uh, fortunately for me, my opponent didn't see that and just took the knight right away, took the rook right away. So he's still winning. He's up the exchange. Uh, but he could have had a stronger advantage. Now he tries to trap my queen, but I can escape back to c2. So he continues with uh, g6, trying to clamp down on my uh, f5 break here. And uh, I play g4, trying to trying to enforce it. I'm going to try and play actively. I have a slight uh, advantage in space and if I can get my pieces out and activate it before uh, he gets his out, um, you know, this is still a playable game. Uh, it turns out he does a good job of activating his pieces starting with this move f5 and um, so his, his pieces start flooding in and one way he gets them is by, you know, pressuring my f-pawn and so I lift my bishop so I can bring the rook over to defend um, and he's got like three pieces attacking it. And so he's forced me into, uh, <clears throat> by attacking that pawn, and also was never good for me to push that pawn. Um, it was um, exposing this knight to uh, bishop takes, followed by queen takes check, uh, which would be pretty pretty uh, uncomfortable for me. So uh, I had to defend it. And um, so he's using that as a way of getting all his pieces developed, which is very, very good. You attack, you develop pieces and attack your opponent's pieces at the same time. It gives you time to develop the rest of your pieces. So I defended this uh, knight on G with my move king g2 uh, with the idea that now I can play the move uh, f5 and if he takes I can take back with a pawn. So that's how it goes. Uh, he doesn't take, of course. And now I need to just take back that pawn. This next move here. So, so far um, the computer has been rating black as being, you know, better by about a pawn or a little more, you know, which is um, an advantage but not an overwhelming advantage. So the game is not yet over. But after this, uh, it's pretty much game over. What I missed, I was thinking, oh, I'll get my bishop here with a tempo and then I'll take his pawn. What I missed is that uh, after this, he can attack my uh, bishop with his rook. And this is very dangerous because he's threatening queen takes knight pawn takes, and then, uh, I mean, bishop takes knight, pawn takes bishop, and then rook takes bishop, check, and so he's got two pieces, uh, he's just won an extra piece, and I'm in check, and he's he's just winning there. So I have to do something about um, my bishop hanging, and that means that uh, I don't get the chance to take back this pawn. So now, uh, now black has a strong advantage, and it continues here. 
Um, he's attacking, and uh, you know I had moved my knight to this square, thinking to trade off the his knight when it comes here. But now I realize that uh, in the game I realize that uh, the pawn takes knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, and he's got these two pawns on this these squares looking very strong indeed. <laughs> That's very threatening, taking away all these squares around the uh, king and uh, threatening to push forward. So uh, didn't like that, and that is, that is in fact, a dangerous thing. So after knight e4, I play queen d1, just get out of that, and he trades. And then he plays this move, rook e3. So this uh, was a slight imprecision. Actually, the best move here for black, why don't you guys uh, take a look at the situation and figure out what you would play as black. This is kind of an instructive move. Um, the best way for... I'm going to tell you the answer now, so go ahead and pause the video if you want more time to think about it. The best way for black to con continue the attack is f3. And um, well, I can't give an exact line here that shows uh, you know, uh, white being checkmated. Um, there's a lot of danger created. So, for example, rook takes f3, bishop takes here. And notice that uh, if I hadn't taken with the rook, if I'd taken with the bishop, for example, he would have the threat of uh, queen coming to g3. So that's why I had to take with the rook. And uh, what this has done, really, by, by pushing that pawn forward, and um, he, he's just opened up all the lines for his pieces. So all his pieces become active. So I can't, uh, I can't really give you a line from here that uh, shows white or black with a forced win of material. Uh, the computer gives a long line where black just maneuvers his pieces. Um, but I guess the point is that uh, that black has opened up all these lines and so all his pieces are working and my bishop is a little out of play over here. So, uh, so this turns out to be a winning advantage for black. And something to keep in mind when you're when you've got an attack going you want to open up lines onto your enemy king and then that just helps you to uh, get your pieces to the right squares where you can attack your enemy's king when the, the lines are open. Um, so he played rook e3, um, which was still a winning move, but not the strongest move, and, and allows me to sort of get back in the game. And the other thing that was going on now was uh, he was starting to get low on time. And so, um, you know, I wanted to keep the game complicated, and I wanted to keep making threats. And um, so this move here with the bishop threatens to take this pawn, which would pin this uh, rook against the king and even win back some material. So he plays queen b7 defending, and then I play uh, rook e2. Uh, maybe this is not the best in light of the idea of trying to keep it complicated, but uh, I was really uh, afraid of this uh, rook here in my camp, and I wanted to exchange it off. So he takes, I take, and he plays rook e7 attacking my queen, and I go queen d2. Um, but this has um, allowed me now to um, double up on this pawn. So I'm now threatening to, uh, to take that pawn. Let's see, let's get that one. And uh, he's only defended it with one piece because his queen had to pause and defend this pawn over here, and it took it off of this pawn. Um, and uh, being low on time, he didn't find the best response here, and he played king h8. And now I'm actually um, starting to get back in the game. Um, I take this pawn, and um, he takes back. Bishop takes f4. Uh, no, he played queen c6 instead of taking. And then I play bishop to g5, attacking his rook. And uh, so up until this point, black has still had a slight advantage. He's let me back in the game, but he's still, uh, if you look at the pawns are even, and he still has the advantage of a rook against uh, bishop. Um, but he plays this move, rook e8. Um, and that's, that's a definite mistake. So uh, I, can't, I can't make a quiz of this since uh, the answer is right there on the board. But, but it allows me to play this move, bishop f6 check, which uh, puts his king into an awkward uh, square. And then I can follow up with queen g5. So uh, let me back up for a second and uh, say that after this move, rook e8, um, white's actually winning according to the computer. He had to play the move rook f7 um, to stop me from coming to f6 here, and then he still retains a slight advantage. Um, so after this, uh, bishop f6 check, king g8, and queen g5, 
It's a double, well, it's an attack on this pawn here. And there's actually no, no good way to defend that pawn. Uh, the rook can't come to this square because it's guarded, for example. Um, so that's, that's why, uh, why uh, uh, black is in trouble already. Um, this, this move here is not, not the best way to play it, but because um, bishop d5 check uh, brings about resignation. If he were to take the, uh, if he were to take the bishop, this is kind of a nice line. Queen takes queen, leads to uh, mate and two. Rook there, and that's checkmate. And it's uh, all you need is, is two diagonals to uh, checkmate the king if uh, these two squares are covered. Um, lots of times there's a rook there and a pawn there, so if you can get those two diagonals, you can you can uh, mate your opponent's king. So that's an interesting pattern worth knowing. But the game ended here. Uh, the computer gives the best defense as queen e6, but that just is uh, giving up the queen for a bishop is no good. Um, so the other thing I wanted to say is uh, this a little bit of uh, an instructive lesson about how to play a game when your uh, opponent is low on time. And uh, there's a tendency to try and move quickly, you know, kind of blitz out your moves and uh, uh, try and run out your opponent's clock. But um, uh, if you think about it, when you're, you're sort of uh, equalizing the game by playing fast, and, and really the best way when you have the time advantage, um, the best way to take advantage of that is to actually use the time, think about your moves, and try and find the, the best and the strongest moves. And also keep the game complicated, so don't trade off too many pieces, but uh, keep, keep your pieces active, uh, make threats, and, uh, and think about your moves. Don't allow many cheap shots where you can win the game suddenly. So uh, anyway, I hope you guys uh, found that game instructive here. Let's go forward to the final position here. And, um, and uh, leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.